Middle English phonology is necessarily somewhat speculative, since it is preserved only as a written language. Nevertheless, there is a very large text corpus of Middle English. The dialects of Middle English vary greatly over both time and place, and in contrast with Old English and Modern English, spelling was usually phonetic rather than conventional. Words were generally spelled according to how they sounded to the person writing a text, rather than according to a formalized system that might not accurately represent the way the writer's dialect was pronounced, as Modern English is today. The Middle English speech of the City of London in the late 14th century essentially, the speech of Geoffrey Chaucer is used as the standard Middle English dialect in teaching and when specifying the grammar or phonology of Middle English. It is this form that is described below, unless otherwise indicated. In the rest of the article, abbreviations are used as follows. Topic. Sound inventory. The surface sounds of Chaucerian Middle English whether allophones or phonemes are shown in the tables below. Topic: Consonants. 1. Carat the exact nature of Middle English r is unknown. It may have been an alveolar approximant as in most modern English accents, an alveolar tap or an alveolar trill r. This article uses r indiscriminately. Topic. Consonant allophones The sounds marked in parentheses in the table above are allophones is an allophone of n, occurring before k, and for example, ring, ring is re, did not occur a loanword finally in Middle English, unlike in Modern English. c, x are allophones of h, in coda position after front and back vowels, respectively. The evidence for the allophone c after front vowels is indirect, as it is not indicated in the orthography. Nevertheless, there was historically a fronting of asterisk k to t, and of asterisk to j after front vowels in pre Old English, which makes it very likely. Moreover, in late Middle English post Chaucer, x sometimes became f, tough, cough, but only after back vowels, never after front vowels. That is explained if the allophone x is assumed to have sometimes become f but that the allophone c never did. For example, night night is nicked, and tot tot is tau, xt, ch loss, below. Based on evidence from Old English and Modern English, l, and, r, apparently had velarized allophones, and, or similar ones in some positions perhaps all positions in the case of, r. Topic. Voiced fricatives In Old English, v, z were allophones of f, theta, s, respectively, occurring between vowels or voiced consonants. That led to many alternations, hus house who s versus husses of a house who z e s, wif woman y f versus wife's of a woman y v e s. In Middle English, voiced allophones become phonemes, and they are solidly established in Modern English as separate phonemes by several sources. Borrowings from foreign languages, especially Latin, Ancient Greek, and Old French, which introduced sounds where they had not occurred, Modern Fine versus Vine, both borrowings from French, Ether from Greek versus either native. Dialect mixture between Old English dialects like Kentish that voiced initial fricatives and the more standard dialects that did not. Compare fat versus vat both with f in standard Old English and fox versus vixen Old English fox versus fixen, from Proto-Germanic asterisk fuhsa versus asterisk fussen. Analogical changes that leveled former alternations, grass, grasses, grassy and glass, glasses, glassy with s, replacing the original z, between vowels but to graze and to glaze, still with z, originally derived from grass and glass, respectively. Contrast wife versus wives, greasy, still with a, z, in some dialects such as that of Boston and staff, with two plurals, analogical staffs and inherited staves. Loss of final, e, resulting in voiced fricatives at the end of a word where only voiceless fricatives had occurred. That is the source of the modern distinctions house versus to house, teeth versus to teeth, half versus to have. Reduction of double consonants to single consonants. 
That explains the contrast between kiss, to kiss Old English kos, sisson, with a double s versus house, to house with z, in the verb Old English hus, fusion, with a single s. Sandy effects that introduced voiced fricatives at the beginning and the end of certain unstressed function words. Contrast this with s versus as with z, off with f versus of with v, originally the same word, with with in some dialects versus pith with theta, this with initial versus thistle with initial theta. The status of the sources in Chaucer's Middle English is as follows. The first three sources borrowing, dialect mixture, analogy were already established. As indicated by versification, the loss of final e was normal in Chaucer's time before a vowel initial word and optional elsewhere. It is assumed that it is a poetic relic and that the loss of final e was already complete in spoken English, a similar situation to modern French, cemuet. The reduction of double consonants had apparently was about to occur. The Sandy effects on unstressed function words occurred somewhat later, in the transition to modern English. The strongest distinction was between f and v, because of the large number of borrowings from Old French. It is also the only distinction that is consistently indicated in spelling, as f and v respectively. z, sometimes appears as z, especially in borrowings from Greek and sometimes as s. Both theta and are spelled th. Topic Vowels Topic Monophthongs Middle English had a distinction between close mid and open mid long vowels but no corresponding distinction in short vowels. Although the behavior of open syllable lengthening seems to indicate that the short vowels were open mid in quality, according to Lass, they were close mid. There is some direct documentary evidence. In early texts, open mid was spelled aia, but both e and e were spelled eo. Later, the short vowels were in fact lowered to become open mid vowels, as is shown by their values in modern English. The front rounded vowels, yyoo stroke, existed in the southwest dialects of Middle English, which developed from the standard late West Saxon dialect of Old English, but not in the standard Middle English dialect of London. The close vowels, y, and y, are direct descendants of the corresponding Old English vowels and were indicated as u. In the standard dialect of Middle English, the sounds became i and i. In Kentish, they became e and e. Y may have existed in learned speech in loanwords from Old French, also spelled u, but, as it merged with u, becoming ju, in modern English, rather than i, it can be assumed that u was the vernacular pronunciation that was used in French derived words. The mid-front rounded vowels, oo stroke, likewise had existed in the southwest dialects but not in the standard Middle English dialect of London. They were indicated as o. Sometime in the 13th century, they became unrounded and merged with the normal front mid-vowels. They derived from the Old English diphthongs, eo, and eo. There is no direct evidence that were was ever a distinction between open mid, and close mid, o stroke, but it can be assumed because of the corresponding distinction in the unrounded mid front vowels. O stroke, would have derived directly from Old English, e o, and, derived from the open syllable lengthening of short, o, from the Old English short diphthong, e o. The quality of the short open vowel is unclear. Early in Middle English, it presumably was central, a, since it represented the coalescence of the Old English vowels, a, and a. During the early Modern English period, it was fronted, in most environments, to a in Southern England, and it and even closer values are found in the contemporary speech of Southern England, North America and the Southern Hemisphere, it remains a in much of Northern England, Scotland and the Caribbean. Meanwhile, the long open vowel, which developed later because of open syllable lengthening, was a. At the time of Middle English breaking, the short open vowel was not a front vowel since a, u, rather than i, was introduced after it. It was gradually fronted, to successively ash, and e, in the 16th and the 17th centuries. <laughs> <laughs> Diphthongs One the Old English sequences, o with, o, produced late Middle English, u, Apparently after passing through early Middle English, o, o e groen, grow, greater than l m e, ru, e. However, early Middle English, o, h, had Middle English breaking produce late Middle English, u h, o e to, tough, greater than eem, t o u, h, greater than l m e, 2 h. Apparently, early, o, 
became u before the occurrence of Middle English breaking, which generated new occurrences of o, which later became u. All of the above diphthongs came about within the Middle English era. Old English had a number of diphthongs, but all of them had been reduced to monophthongs in the transition to Middle English. Middle English diphthongs came about by various processes and at various time periods. Diphthongs tended to change their quality over time. The changes above occurred mostly between Early and Late Middle English. Early Middle English had a distinction between open mid and close mid diphthongs, and all of the close mid diphthongs had been eliminated by Late Middle English. The following processes produced the above diphthongs. Reinterpretation of Old English sequences of a vowel followed by with, greater than, with, or, j. O e weg, way, greater than eem, we, greater than lme, y. O e dag, day, greater than me, die. Middle English breaking before, h, x, c. Borrowing, especially from Old French. Topic. Phonological processes The following sections describe the major phonological processes occurring between written Late West Saxon the standard written form of Old English and the end of Middle English, conventionally dated to around 1500 AD. Topic. Homorganic lengthening Late in Old English, vowels were lengthened before certain clusters, nd, ld, rode, mb. Later on, the vowels in many of these words were shortened again, giving the appearance that no lengthening happened, but evidence from the ormulum indicates otherwise. For details see Phonological History of Old English, Vowel Lengthening. Topic. Stressed vowel changes Late West Saxon the standard written form of Old English included matched pairs of short and long vowels, including seven pairs of pure vowels monophthongs, a, e, i, o, u, y, and two pairs of height harmonic diphthongs, a, and, e, o. Two additional pairs of diphthongs, i, u, and, i, y, existed in earlier Old English but had been reduced to, e, o, and, y, respectively, by late Old English times. In the transition to Middle English, this system underwent major changes, eliminating the diphthongs and leaving only one pair of low vowels, but with a vowel distinction appearing in the long mid-vowels. The diphthongs, ash, ash, simplified to, a, and, ash, respectively. Subsequently, the low vowels were modified as follows. a, and, merged to a single central vowel, a, ash, and, raised to, and, respectively. The diphthongs, eo, eo, simplified to new front round vowels, o, and, o stroke, respectively. Everywhere except in the southwest, these vowels quickly unrounded to become, e, and, e, respectively. In the southwest, it took 200 or 300 years for this process to take place, and in the meantime the sounds were spelled o in texts from the southwest. The front rounded vowels, y, and, y, unrounded to, i, and, i, respectively, everywhere but in the southwest former West Saxon area and southeast former Kentish area. In the southwest, these front rounded vowels remained, and were spelled u. In the southeast, the vowels had already been unrounded to, e, and, e, respectively, in Old English times, and remained as such in Middle English. This left an asymmetric system consisting of five short vowels, a, e, i, o, u, and six long vowels, e, i, o, u, with additional front rounded vowels, o, y, in the southwest area. Some symmetry was restored by open syllable lengthening, which restored a long low vowel, a. Topic. Reduction and loss of unstressed vowels Unstressed vowels were gradually confused in Late Old English, although the spelling lagged behind, due to the existence of a standardized spelling system. By Early Middle English, all unstressed vowels were spelt e, probably representing also in Late Old English, final unstressed per meter, became, n, during the Middle English period, this final, n, was dropped when it was part of an inflectional syllable but remained when part of the root, e.g. 7, or in derivational endings, e.g. written, around Chaucer's time, final, was dropped, judging from inflectional evidence, this occurred first when the following word began with a vowel. 
A century or so later, unstressed also dropped in the plural and genitive ending s spelled s in modern English and the past ending ed. These changes steadily effaced most inflectional endings, e.g. Oe metan greater than me meet n greater than lme meet t greater than ne meet per mile t. Oe wicu greater than me week greater than lme week greater than ne week yk. Oe nama greater than me name greater than lme n ash m greater than ne name ne m. In the last two examples, the stressed vowel was affected by open syllable lengthening. Topic: Vocalization of and development of new diphthongs. The sound, which had been a post-vocalic allophone of, became vocalized to u. This occurred around the year 1200. A new set of diphthongs developed from combinations of vowel plus u either from or from pre-existing with or vowel plus i from pre-existing j, and also due to borrowing from French. See diphthongs above. Topic. Breaking During the 12th or 13th centuries, a vowel, i, was inserted between a front vowel and a following, h, pronounced c in this context, and a vowel, u, was inserted between a back vowel and a following, h, pronounced x in this context. Short, a, was treated as a back vowel in this process the long equivalent did not occur in the relevant context. See h loss, below. Topic. Open syllable lengthening Around the 13th century, short vowels were lengthened in an open syllable i.e. when followed by a single consonant that in turn is followed by another vowel. In addition, non-low vowels were lowered, i, greater than, e, e, greater than, u, greater than, o, o, greater than. This accounts, for example, for the vowel difference between staff and the alternative plural staves Middle English staf versus staves, with open syllable lengthening in the latter word. This process was restricted in the following ways. It did not occur when two or more syllables followed, due to the opposing process of trisyllabic laxing. It only occasionally applied to the high vowels, i, and, u, e, g. O e wudu greater than me, wo d greater than would, o e w i c u greater than me, we k greater than weak. Most instances of i and u remained as such, e.g. o e hanutu greater than ne nut, o e ridden greater than ne ridden. The effects of open syllable lengthening and trisyllabic laxing often led to differences in the stem vowel between singular and plural, genitive. Generally these differences were regularized by analogy in one direction or another, but not in a consistent way. Me path, paths greater than ne path, paths, but me wall, whales greater than ne whale, whales. Me cradle, cradles greater than ne cradle, cradles, but me sadel, sadels greater than ne saddle, saddles. Topic. Trisyllabic laxing. In late Old English, vowels were shortened before clusters of two consonants when two or more syllables followed. Later in Middle English this process was expanded, and applied to all vowels when two or more syllables followed. This led to the modern English variations between divine versus divinity, school versus scholarly, grateful versus gratitude, etc. In some cases, later changes have led to apparently anomalous results, e.g. south versus southern with only two syllables but, su earn, at the time that trisyllabic laxing applied. This change is still fairly productive in modern English. <laughs> Pre-cluster shortening In late Old English, vowels were shortened before clusters of three consonants, O e gast greater than northeast ghost, o street, o e gastlik greater than ne gastly, s li, s t l i, o e sild greater than ne child, ta ld, o e sildru plus o e and greater than ne children, tuldern, o e god greater than ne good, o e godspell greater than ne gospel as shown by gastly. This shortening occurred before the raising of o e, to eem, which occurred in the transition to Middle English. Later in Middle English, vowels were shortened before clusters of two consonants, except before per stone, and in some cases where homorganic lengthening applied. Examples: O e septa greater than kept cf. 
O E sepon greater than keep O E met greater than met CF O E metan greater than meet Topic Reduction of double consonants Double geminated consonants were reduced to single ones. This took place after open syllable lengthening. The syllable before a geminate was a closed syllable, hence vowels were not lengthened before originally doubled consonants. The loss of gemination may have been stimulated its small functional load. By this time there were few minimal pairs of words distinguished solely by the single versus double consonant contrast. Topic: H loss. The phoneme h, when it occurred in the syllable coda, is believed to have had two allophones: the voiceless palatal fricative c, occurring after front vowels, and the voiceless velar fricative x, occurring after back vowels. The usual spelling in both cases was gh, which is retained today in words like night and tot. These sounds were lost during the later Middle English and early Modern English eras. The timing of this process was dependent on dialect, the fricatives were still pronounced in some educated speech in the 16th century, but they had disappeared by the late 17th. Loss of the fricatives was accompanied by some compensatory lengthening or diphthongization of preceding vowels. In some cases, the velar fricative x developed into f, as such the preceding vowel was shortened, and the u of a diphthong was absorbed. However, the palatal fricative c in no instances became f. Some possible developments are illustrated below. O e n i h t night greater than me n i h t nicked greater than ni t greater than nay nat by the great vowel shift. O e halahan to laugh greater than me low greater than l l m e l a f greater than e l f greater than nay l a f l f. O e to tough greater than me two x greater than l l m e tough greater than nay t f. This variable outcome, along with other variable changes and the ambiguity of the Middle English spelling o, either o or u in early Middle English, accounts for the numerous pronunciations of modern English words in ow, e.g. though, through, bow, rough, trough, thought, with ow pronounced o, u, o, f, f, respectively. H, spelled gh is realized as x even today in some traditional dialects of Northern England and more famously Scots. Some accents of Northern England lack the x, instead exhibiting special vowel developments in some such words, for example, night as ni t, neat and in the dialectal words owt and nout from ot and not, pronounced like out and nout, meaning anything and nothing. Also, in Northern England, a distinction is often preserved between the vowel in words like way, wait and ate, and the e, of wait and late the northern realization of the vowel resulting from the pain-pain merger. The modern phoneme, x, most commonly appears today in the typically Scottish word lock and in names such as buchan. Here the, x, is usual in Scotland, although the alternative, k, is becoming more common among some younger speakers. The same is true in Wales, in names such as Lahore. The X in these cases may either survive from Middle English or have been borrowed from the local Celtic languages. English speakers from elsewhere may replace the X in such cases with K, but some use X in imitation of the local pronunciations as they may in certain foreign words such as Bach, Kharkiv, Sakhalin, Hutzpah, etc. Topic: <laughs> Great vowel shift. The Great Vowel Shift was a fundamental change in Late Middle English post -Chaucer and Early Modern English that affected the pronunciation of all of the long vowels. The high vowels, i, and, u, were diphthongized, ultimately producing the modern diphthongs, a, and, a, and all other vowels were raised. Diphthong <inaudible> loss <inaudible> <inaudible> Although not normally considered a part of the Great Vowel Shift, during the same time period most of the pre-existing Middle English diphthongs were monophthongized. I, greater than een, greater than, e, greater than ne, e, o, greater than een, u, greater than een, o, greater than ne, o. The remaining diphthongs developed as follows. U, u, greater than een, u, greater than ne, ju, u, is still used in Welsh English. I, ui, greater than ne. Topic: 
Vowel equivalents from Old English to Modern English For a detailed description of the changes between Old English and Middle, Modern English, see the article on the phonological history of English. A summary of the main vowel changes is presented below. The spelling of Modern English largely reflects Middle English pronunciation. Topic monophthongs This table presents the general developments. Many exceptional outcomes occurred in particular environments. Vowels were often lengthened in late Old English before, LD, ND, MB. Vowels changed in complex ways before, R, throughout the history of English, etc. Vowels were diphthongized in Middle English before, H, and new diphthongs arose in Middle English by the combination of vowels with Old English W, G, greater than, with, and G, J. For more information, see the section below. The only conditional development considered in detail below is Middle English open syllable lengthening. In the column on modern spelling, CV means a sequence of a single consonant followed by a vowel. Note, in this table, abbreviations are used as follows, the modern English vowel usually spelled O, British, American, tilde, does not appear in the above chart. Its main source is late Middle English, O, as mentioned above, modern English is derived from the Middle English of London, which is derived largely from Anglian Old English, with some admixture of West Saxon and Kentish. One of the most noticeable differences among the dialects is the handling of original Old English, Y. By the time of the written Old English documents, the Old English of Kent had already unrounded, Y, to, E, and the late Old English of Anglia unrounded, Y, to, I. In the West Saxon area, Y, remained as such well into Middle English times and was written U in Middle English documents from the area. Some words with the sound were borrowed into London Middle English, where the unfamiliar, Y, was substituted with, U, guild much merry berry, brie, busy, busy, apart, differently, compared to sunder and asunder. Topic. Diphthongs Note, V means, any vowel, C means, any consonant, hash means, end of word, 